Uh, <laughs> David Davis, um, there's a photograph of the DP, and that's the man getting very annoyed. He can't believe it. He's, he's just lost out in the Kevin Costner lookalike competition. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is about the border, the Irish border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. It's got to be sorted out before Sunday in a couple of days' time, so um, then it will all be all right. Nice. <laughs> Sat down. So, basically, this is uh, Theresa May's latest attempt to make Brexit happen, even though she backed Remain. And she's been vetoed by the DUP, who are for Brexit, although they represent Northern Ireland, which are Remain. Mm. And the whole thing is being opposed by Jeremy Corbyn, who said he was Remain, but actually is probably Brexit. So Brexit is just going really well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you make that sound incredibly easy. Oh, it is. <laughs> As David Davis said. Mm. Is he the thickest man that's ever lived, do you think, David Davis? The thickest. He's the thickest man that's ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's probably other thicker people, but I can't think of them at the moment. <laughs> Did you see his appearance yesterday, on, on, well, on Wednesday it was, you know, when he appeared in front of a parliamentary select committee and said, oh, no, we haven't, haven't done anything, nothing. <laughs> I know I said we've done loads of things, but yeah, we haven't. I secretly, though... No, don't, don't oh, make no. Us, Keep it a secret. Oh, sorry, OK. <laughs> well, you, are you about to say that you secretly fancy him? No, no, I, no not fancy him. No. I've always quite liked his style. David, David Davis. Davis? I don't know why. I've always what quite liked his style. And I've got a feeling, that whole thing when he's, you know, uh, what is it, all the tests they're meant to be doing. Impact assessments. Impact, Impact assessments, assessments yes. yes. I've got this feeling that he's doing it to make sure we all still have a lovely Christmas and don't see the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't think he's got evil intentions. And you call Davis the thickest man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I withdraw my comments. <laughs> he had a very bad day, even yes, if you like him. I think his argument was that the Parliament was asking for impact assessments, but actually what he had was sectoral analysis. Yes. So therefore he didn't have to produce it. Mm. And um, it's a bit like saying... I haven't produced the homework because you call it homework, but I call it homework. <laughs> <laughs> Even the stuff he had, he said there's some enormous document and that he's only read the start of yeah. and then gave up. It's understandable, though, because Brexit is really boring. Yeah. You know? For me, more than anything else, it feels like a really long Indian wedding. You know, you've been, <laughs> you've been stuck in a marquee in Luton for five days. <laughs> Your uncles are talking about the buy-to-let market. There's another five days to go. And basically, you will do anything to get out of it, up to and including agreeing to Brexit. <laughs> so, is, is it like a long Indian divorce, then? Well, we don't divorce. Oh, right. <laughs> this is indeed uh, news that arguments about boring old Brexit, as, as you've said, have been overshadowed by arguments about scary old Northern Ireland. It all came up at lunch. I mean, because... Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Very unpleasant. <laughs> <John Paul. laughs> it was a celebratory lunch, and in the middle of it, she gets a phone call and she says, oh, sorry, you know, I said over the start that I've agreed everything. Yeah. I haven't. Oh. Uh, we're going home. <laughs> um, and that was it. Arlene Foster phoned up, said yes. no. Yeah. Which is a traditional Northern Irish greeting. <laughs> uh, my, my wife is a from the Northern Ireland Unionist yes. community. Yep. And I would warn Theresa May, you do not mess with these people. <laughs> um, I just, I, I've so many times had my plans smashed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 like what? Can I like a curry with Marcus and Simon? No! You know, it's... Um, <laughs> I just think Theresa's going to end up sleeping on the couch. And, um, <laughs> Does anyone know, uh, what's the difference between no regulatory divergence and continued regulatory alignment. Divergence is what the DUP fear in, in thinking that Northern Ireland might be different in some way from the rest of the UK, which it is in lots of other ways, which they don't mind in the slightest. There are exactly. different laws there, there are different regulations yes. there, not least the libel laws. This is interesting now. Oh, it's great. <laughs> this is great. The DUP wants to be close to the UK on things, on this issue, but they don't on in things like gay marriage and abortion and things that might drag them out of the 1950s. Sorry, but I, I just said that to stick it to the in-laws, really. But, um... <laughs> but, no, I do. Um, how, how's Christmas looking? Yes. Yes. Awkward. Yes. <laughs> I might get very ill and not be able to go. <laughs> What, according to the Times, is Theresa May's fundamental problem? I should know this, it's... given I work for the Times. Yeah, yeah. come on, Satnam. I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> fudge. Oh, fudge. fudge. Right. She's been trying to fudge her way through the EU negotiations. Yeah, well, that's what negotiations are, aren't exactly. they? Exactly. You and... know she's diabetic, and that's a slightly... <laughs> slightly unfortunate thing to pick up on. There'll be a fudge. There'll be a fudge. <laughs> Just wait till this is on day. We'll all be laughing. <laughs> What do the Labour Party think should be done in these EU negotiations? 
they think they should keep very, very quiet. Yeah. Mm. In case anyone notices that they haven't got an idea either. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. They're not saying anything. And according to The Telegraph, Jeremy Corbyn reportedly stopped his EU spokesman from talking to the media after the Prime Minister's Brussels failure. Furious Labour MPs are threatening to rebel against Jeremy Corbyn if he refuses to stand up for a soft Brexit. Oh dear, I think John McDonnell will be visiting them with his ice pick. <laughs> um, who is the real architect of this whole sorry, ruddy mess? Cameron. David Cameron. Dave Cameron, yeah. yeah. Dave. He, Cameron. he decided to gamble the country's future on a referendum just to settle a pathetic argument in his mental party. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we send the letters about BBC bias to you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, would you like to see a baby that looks like David Cameron? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Yes. Come on, here we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that is Bobby Carter there, little baby, who's been in the news this week for his exceptional head of Cameron-esque hair. Fantastic hair. Um, who is still raking it in from the EU? Oh, oh nice voice. Absolutely. Oh, in oh, unison, yeah. team. Ooh, yeah. He's got a pension now, hasn't he? Yes, do you know how much? Oh, £67,000 a year. 73,000. 73, yes. 73. Yeah. 73. Can we play higher and lower? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks his family shouldn't suffer, so he's very uh, kindly decided to take this pension from the EU. Yes. I don't remember that figure on the side of the bus, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I hardly dare ask this, mm. but how? Do you quite like Nigel Farage? <laughs> <laughs> Can I say one how, thing about Nigel how? Farage? He has the voice of an angel, doesn't he? <laughs> he's not he's quite gravelly. He's quite There's gravelly. something about his voice, and I thought, do angels have particularly gravelly voices? <laughs> really, you're going to have a baby? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> now, <laughs> Joseph, he ain't the father, but you know, keep him sweet. Keep him sweet. It's going to be the son of God. You're going to call him Jesus. Must go. <laughs> Um, although, news just in, the government has just proposed a new draft agreement and they are discussing it with the DUP as we speak. Has it all been settled? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. All that cynicism. <laughs> Quite <laughs> right. Good old Mrs May. Sorted it out. Uh, the EU Commission said talks would continue into the night, adding, Tonight, more than ever, stay tuned. This is Theresa May's attempt to ruin the Good Friday Agreement with the really bad Monday Agreement. <laughs> A senior DUP figure said, this is a battle of who blinks first, and we've cut off our eyelids. <laughs> well, to be fair, when talking about Brexit, that's just about the only way you can stay awake. <laughs> After Nigel Farage revealed that he intends to claim his EU pension of £73,000 a year, he denied he was a hypocrite, saying, I've just voted to get rid of my job. I was the turkey that voted for Christmas. So, in the festive spirit, let's pull out his giblets and shove an onion up his ass." <laughs> In and how, take a little look at this. Yes, these are people logging in to important uh, sites, private. Yes. Uh, that's a magazine with one word left off it. Never seen uh, it. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, here we are. It's the police. Time to invade the House of Commons. Uh, this is um, how policing in Britain works. A man was apparently accessing porn nine years ago, uh, legally, and the police found this out, waited, and then released the information, which was confidential into the public domain later for their own purposes. The policeman was called Bob Quick, which, given he took nine years to report <laughs> it. It's also slightly... Quite por amusing. Yeah. It's also slightly pornographic, Bob Quick, yeah. isn't it? It's what you need to be if you're watching porn at work. Yes. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right, Ian, and how this is the ongoing scandal over claims pornography was found on Damien Green's House of Commons computer. Uh, Neil Lewis, who was responsible for seizing and analysing Green's computer at the time, he sparked controversy this week after disclosing confidential information gathered during the investigation. Lewis said he found thousands of pornographic thumbnail images, which does, <laughs> does, does sound a bit weird, but if it's what you're into and it's not harming anyone, yeah. then I'm, I'm, cool, I'm cool with that. Why are Damien Green's troubles particularly difficult for Theresa May? She was very good friends with him yeah. at university. Yeah. Um, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> she's, she's, well, she's very close to him politically. Absolutely. No, they... So it could, it, if, if he isn't fired, people might say it's because he's her good friend. A cabinet source told the Sunday Times, there's a danger with saving him because he's so close to her and it'll look like she's looking after her mate's job. There's also a danger that they keep him and then you have to get rid of him two weeks later if something else comes out. You get covered in mm. shit twice. <laughs> 
And uh, I bet that was on one of the videos. Yes! Like, but, um, was, sorry. Uh, and we should say that Damien Green is adamant he has never watched or downloaded pornography on the computer. How might Jeremy Corbyn find himself near some pornography very soon? Oh, you mean if GQ is displayed on the top shelf? Oh. Yes. Ah. He's on the cover of GQ. This is Jeremy Corbyn. Ooh. Ding dong, Jeremy! <laughs> Look at that! Do you think that's his real body or have they superimposed his head? <laughs> he does come out very well, doesn't he? He's a very attractive man. I'm just... I'm <laughs> done! Do you think he's been airbrushed? I think he might have been a little touched up. Do you want to have a look at the original picture? Yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> According to editor Dylan Jones, taking the picture was as difficult as shooting any Hollywood celebrity. Dylan Jones, by the way, wrote the most sycophantic book about David Cameron mm. in the history. He's a bit of a right winger. Sycophantic isn't he? books. Yeah. Mm. Do you think they did it hoping it would backfire? So they did him up, thought it'd make him look ridiculous. Oh, no. And actually, he turns out to be a bit of a stunner. It's a strange editorial approach. Mm. Putting people on the cover just to laugh at them. Really? I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no future in that. Uh, it'll work. never work. Uh, Yes, this is the ongoing scandal over claims pornography was found on Damien Green's office computer. You may not believe this, but while I was researching this story about Damien Green, pornographic images and the Metropolitan Police, someone actually sent me a dick pic, which I'm going to share with you now. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Chris had a dick there, doing a fine job. Also this week, the Social Mobility Commission resigned en masse, saying that the Prime Minister was failing in her bid to build a fairer Britain. When she came to power, Theresa May promised to help those who found themselves just about managing, little knowing that one year on, that would be her. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers hovering over the buzzers, teams, please. This is Donald Trump having sorted out gun control in America and uh, <laughs> health care. He's now decided to sort out the Middle East. And I'm sure the man who can't even find Theresa May on Twitter uh, is capable of sorting out one of the most deeply entrenched political problems in human history. He has united almost the entire world, though. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Against him. Against him, yes. Um, this is the news that the United States have formally recognised Jerusalem as Israel's capital city and plan to relocate their embassy there. How has this gone down with uh, other Middle Eastern powers? It's a huge button in, in the last 50 years. Um, don't press it. Mm. Uh, and Trump goes, oh, yeah, bang. <laughs> I'm hoping this embassy is a bit like the wall. A sort of invisible... It's in his head, not It's in his head, yeah. And also, you've got to get someone years. to build an embassy yeah. in Jerusalem. Anybody fancy that? It's a construction job? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the locals to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I know, let's get some Mexicans to build it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there have been a lot of reactions uh, from other Middle Eastern powers. The Palestinians have called it the kiss of death for the peace process. Turkey said it would plunge the region and world into a fire with no end in sight. Well, the Organisation for Islamic Cooperation have accused Trump of naked aggression, which I don't think really... No, no one wants to see that, Donald. <laughs> Please. Uh, Trump made an announcement at the White House. Uh, what did some viewers think his speech revealed about him? That he has dementia? <laughs> so close, the word. It's not dementia, it's denture. Oh, wow. They think he might have dentures. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. The message I delivered at the historic and extraordinary summit in Saudi Arabia, I asked the leaders of the region, political and religious, <laughs> God bless the United States. Thank you very much. You know, it, it always looks there like Mike Pence is working his hands, that he's got his hands in his jacket and he's saying, that, that. There's something going on with the bottom mm. rung, though, isn't yeah. there? There's something, mm. there's something. Oh, are you suggesting it's the teeth that are actually making the speech? <laughs> yeah. That he's somehow prisoner of his own canines. <laughs> he's like... got the teeth of Hitler, I can see the film now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they saved Hitler's teeth and bunged him in Trump's mouth. <laughs> he probably wanted to say, I just wish you all a happy Christmas, and it all came out as, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Why is Trump doing this now? Why now? He's having certain problems with a man called Flynn. And this week he seems to have tweeted and landed, mm. landed himself into a load of trouble. Mm. And some people are saying he's actually admitted to obstructing justice mm. inadvertently. And his staff's defense of this is that he didn't actually write the tweet. 
Yes, it's going to be quite ironic that, the, 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 that this man who tweets his innermost thoughts may have accidentally shot himself in the foot because he said that uh, the reason why I, I, I had to sack Flynn was because he lied to the FBI. Mm. Yes. Uh, and then the next day, after sacking Flynn, he mm. then had a meeting with the head of the FBI where he told him to drop the case, which would be an obstruction of justice yes. if he knew he had lied to the FBI. The tweet actually said, I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI. He's pled guilty to those lies. It's a shame because his actions during the transition were lawful, there was nothing to hide. Which admittedly does sound like the words of a top criminal defence lawyer. <laughs> well, if you go back to that tweet for a moment as well, there's a point that somebody else has made, that when he has pled, lawyers don't say pled, they use the word pleaded. Yes, mm. pled is odd, isn't it? Yeah, that's his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> He was trying to type pleaded, but it's impossible with those dentures. He's got the teeth of Hitler and the hands of Mussolini. Yeah. <laughs> um, why does it not really matter whether Trump sent the tweet or not? Because we were all going to die in World War III. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> According to Trump's legal team, as Trump is the country's chief law enforcement officer, mm. he cannot obstruct justice. Mm. That's what Nixon tried to say as well. Yeah. So when you're, when, when you're sort of quoting Nixon's defence... <laughs> <laughs> Why might Hillary Clinton be happy and bobbish at the moment? Because uh, Flynn led the chorus of Lock Her Up, Lock Her Up. Let's have a look. Lock her up. That's right. Yes, that's right. Lock her up. I'm going to tell you what. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. If I did a tenth... A tenth of what she did, I would be in jail today. <laughs> this is Donald Trump's latest attempt to bring lasting peace to the world. One of many people to condemn Trump's position on Jerusalem was Pope Francis. Mind you, the Pope's never really liked the president ever since their first meeting when Trump saw a flash of white dress and plunged forward for a quick grab. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teens. Mm. There's a guy uh, who, is to show how TripAdvisor can be manipulated, um, just got all his friends to say this, whatever the restaurant was called, Marco's Spaghetti House or something. The Shed. The Shed. Was it called mm. The Shed? Mm. And, and so and so to tweet about it and sort of say, oh, this was really good, and they got to the top of TripAdvisor, and, but it actually didn't exist. Absolutely right, Paul. This is the news that a fake restaurant in a shed became London's number one rated eatery <laughs> on TripAdvisor. <laughs> how did The Shed at Dulwich describe itself? Fusion. Bit more she, pretentious. The Chateauneuf de Pape had an aroma of creosote. <laughs> <laughs> its fake website explained mm. that they don't have a traditional menu per se. Uh, instead of meals, our menu is comprised of moods. <laughs> 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 Here are some pictures uploaded to the TripAdvisor website. Mm. Uh, can you guess what this is? Uh, uh, it's creme brulee or something, is it? Is, is it, it salmon? Mm. It's actually a bleach tablet covered in honey, shaving foam and pepper. <laughs> And, um, what do you think this food is? A rabbit's been over that, hasn't it? Um. <laughs> no, it's a sponge covered in paint with shaving foam and coffee beans. Oh. And finally, what is this? Is it like the stuff on it is, is like from the bottom of your feet when you rub your feet with a... Oh. Is it a joke shop egg? Mm, this is an egg on a foot. Oh. It was <laughs> um, in other fake food news, popular mm. meat substitute manufacturer Quorn have been criticised for their packaging this week. Dan Douglas bought some mini corn sausage rolls and then tweeted, Have you ever seen anything so brazen? The sausage rolls claimed to be a pack of 12, but then Dan read the small print. 12 mini rolls when cut into fours. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That is response. brilliant. It is brilliant. Time now for the odd one out round. Your four are mm. Piers Morgan, yes. Vicky Pipe and Jeff Marshall, a demolition company in Detroit and a Belgian performance artist, Nickish Popper. Who's called Mike Popper, but I like saying Mickish Popper. OK. Um, so, Piers Morgan at the top there seems to be eating toast, maybe he's choking on the toast. <laughs> uh, the demolition company in Detroit... They failed to blow up a stadium. It's got to be that, oh. isn't it? Because there wouldn't be any story in they did blow up a stadium, unless, of course, they hadn't been commissioned to do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so let's go with that then. Let's say they didn't blow up the stadium. And that couple, I think, have an ambition to visit every railway station in Britain. Ah. So is uh -huh. it about people who want to be completist? Obviously, Piers Morgan wants to annoy every person in Britain. <laughs> yes. uh, so he's achieved that. Yep. Three of them have achieved complete missions, whereas the Detroit company failed. That's not a bad answer. We'll go with that. 
It's so close. You might as well give us the points, Ooh. then. It's, uh, <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's more about failure, guys. It's more about more failure. About ah, failure. so Piers Morgan failed to choke himself to death, <laughs> um, despite sponsorship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the people at the top failed to visit every railway station. No, they went to see every railway. They visited every railway station. Every railway station. So they're the odd ones out, because they succeeded and everybody else failed. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Um, They won't fail to complete a task apart from Vicky Pipe and Jeff Marshall, who yeah. succeeded in their task to visit every train station in Britain I this bet they summer. didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that interesting a thing to do, though. Is it? Well, I suppose it is, but it, you wouldn't want to spend Christmas with them, would you? They... You're so nice! No, not We've when you could have David station. Davis come round. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the real treat, wouldn't it? You wouldn't know what to stuff first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the failures. Yes. Uh, Piers Morgan was hired to turn on the Christmas lights in Stockbridge in Hampshire. After the Christmas lights in Stockbridge failed to come on, <laughs> Piers claimed, I did my job faultlessly. The people who didn't do their job correctly were the people who sabotaged the system. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the real failure was not connecting the live wire to Piers' genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at Piers failing. OK, here we go, Stockbridge. You ready for this? Yeah! Count after me. Five. Five! Go! <laughs> um, now we must focus on the other failure. It yeah. was uh, Michael Polpish. Do you know what he failed at? Was he going to cover his entire body in gold foil? And no. then and ran out of foil? No. Mm. It's got nothing to do with what we're looking at then? No, it really hasn't. No. Oh. It's going to be difficult for us to get it then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he chained himself to an enormous block of marble. Uh, from which he tried to sort of uh, chisel himself out. Uh -huh. And um, after his 19-day ordeal... 19, 19 days. days? Yep. He told the Telegraph, this block of marble was the symbol of history, the history of art, which I am trying to free myself from. I have discovered that this is not possible. <laughs> Vicky Pipe and Jeff Marshall spent 15 weeks this summer visiting every single one of Britain's railway stations by train. To pay for their railway journey to every station, they crowdfunded £38,000. That got them as far as Manchester in peak time. After that, they were on their own. <laughs> <laughs> Piers Morgan's attempt to turn on the Christmas lights in Stockbridge was unsuccessful. This is an odd failure for a man who can normally light up a room just by leaving it. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, and we start with pigeons are much cleverer than we thought, and could even what? And could even hold down a job in the government, making David Davis look like a <laughs> <laughs> that he actually is. It's actually understand the concept of space and time. Yeah, time is very important for pigeons. One hour forty at gas mark five, and they're delicious. <laughs> Next, what? The ultimate tribute to suffragettes. The bootleg. Suffragettes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all female Big Brother. To celebrate 100 years of women's suffrage, Channel 5 have announced they will be running a female only celebrity Big Brother in January. When the producer was asked to comment on the series, he said, It's a great step forward for the feminist movement, and I bet they keep the house nice and tidy too. <laughs> Finally, mother so scared by virtual reality experience, she what? Shut herself. <laughs> <laughs> Grabs wrong end of dog. <laughs> uh, this is, this is oh, good. Let's have a look at this important <laughs> moment. Scores are Ian and Howe have three points, Paul and Satnam have nine points. <laughs> and I leave you with news that in Sussex, locals realise that Southern Rail are already operating on a Christmas timetable. <laughs> At the launch of a new iPhone charger, Apple once again create a product incompatible with anything else. <laughs> And in New York, evidence emerges that once a year, like other reptiles, Donald Trump sheds his skin. <laughs> Good night!
Susan Kalman is on a quest to unwind by doing things that other folk find relaxing. Head to the Radio 4 website to find out how she gets on in Keep Kalman and Carry On. Next tonight here on BBC One, it's all round to Mrs Brown's for Christmas, including some very persistent carol singers.